Coral reefs are underwater cities. About a quarter of marine life depends on, the, on them at some stage in their life cycle. And then there's a the half billion people that rely on the ocean for sustenance and stuff. Yet we're completely ignoring the ocean and our coral reefs are dying. And I think it's high time we change it and we do something about that. If you really want to know about this, if you really care about coral bleaching and all that, and you want to know more now, as ironic as that sounds, stop watching this video and go watch a few other things. I recommend which ones, but for those of you who don't have the time to get into documentaries and to learn everything, and or you just need a big picture kind of summary before you get into the details, I'll give you one. I'll talk about coal bleaching and I'll explain what it means and why it matters and what happens. Okay, so let's get into that. First, recommendations. If you want to know all the details, Netflix has made a few of the best documentaries available on YouTube. And yes, I know they do it for the ad money, probably, or there's some other ulterior motive, but they have released Chasing Coral and they have released Our Planet with David Attenborough, on YouTube for free, but with ads. But it's it, you don't have to have a Netflix account. So there really isn't a good excuse anymore to not watch those two documentaries. And Chasing Coral and Our Planet are two of the best documentaries that I've ever seen. Um, Life on Our Planet by Devin Attenborough is also excellent, but not available for free. And I don't think there was that much on Coral in there. I'm currently watching Blue Planet 2 with my husband, which also isn't free and is available nearly nowhere. And I actually had to buy it, like actually buy the season to watch it. But it has some really, really great stuff on corals and in general, the ocean. So if you are deep into these things, those are the documentaries I suggest you watch. And if you still haven't gotten enough, there's a lot of stuff on National Geographic that you can read for any great level, okay, enough about where you could go instead of watching this video. Yeah, um, best overview I can do, let's try. <laughs> okay, so as we discussed in the first segment of biodiversity basics about corals, corals are animals, or rather a colony of many animals, they're kind of like anemones. So take one anemone, take many of them, make them look like a plant and you've got a coral doesn't change the fact that it's not a plant. It is very much many animals working together to make things work out fine. And to make things more complicated, they actually live in symbiosis with a small organism, photosynthetic organism called Suzentily. And another one that we won't talk about because that's just recently been discovered and it just helps them to communicate in a way we don't yet understand, but it's exciting. And if you care about this, go find articles about the three-way symbiosis of coral. And if you can't find it, email me and I'll send it to you. But anyway, so there's the symbiotic relationship between the colony of coral and the zooxanthellae that live in the coral. And the zooxanthellae give the coral energy or food, however you want to look at it, in return for living space. And then at night the coral hunts, but it's very much reliant on these small organisms inside them. And yes, there's been studies that show that coral eat a lot more actually themselves than we originally thought, and their diet varies throughout even one reef, but they need their little friends to keep their energy levels up. Even if they're good at hunting and they eat more than others, they still need their zooxanthellae. They need their little helpers and they give them living space in return. Some coral build skeletons underneath them and they can grow into huge structures as big as a house. And those we know as coral reefs. And corals aren't the only species that make up a reef, but they kind of make up the foundation and the houses. It's like they are the mountain and the houses at the same time. And then everything else lives in the reef or on the reef or whatever. It's kind of like giant kelp in California. But I won't talk about California or giant kelp again because I've done that in like, yeah, a lot. So when the ocean warms, as it has exponentially since the Industrial Revolution, all kinds of organisms get affected. From plankton to the largest organisms, everyone gets affected by the warmer temperatures, just like we humans are affected during a heat wave on land in air. 
Corals built the basis of the coral reef. They are the house, the home, and all the organisms are in them. They built the foundation for sponges and other sessile organisms they, that need to attach to rock or coral. So we'll focus on how corals react to the warming temperatures. While I will mention just real quickly, the warmer water also expands. So if we're thinking sea level rise, there's more to it than just melting ice caps because the sea actually expands and takes up more room. And there's a lot of water to expand there. So that's gonna happen the more the ocean warms. So just as a side note, anyway, back to coral. I, I still think you should go watch Chasing Coral instead. It shows the struggle of the coral reef so perfectly by showing the struggle of the camera team rec reporting it. But um, I'll do my best. I'll try. Yes. When things get too hot for coral, they kind of lose their collective mind and they tell the little Zuzensoli the things they rely on to get the fuck out. And that's, you notice this because they turn white at that point. They are bleached. They are, don't, there's actually no bleach involved in the process, but yeah, they look like you threw them in bleach and now they are white and shiny and no longer whatever color they be, were before because the zoo, the zoo then the Lee give the coral the color. So when the coral loses their mind and tells the things to get out, it loses its color because it can't. And it also loses an important source of energy input. Like I said, they get a lot of energy from the little dudes. They need their little dudes. So now they are alone because they kicked out all their friends. I mean, they are still a colony. So can a coral really be alone? Anyway, they lose the nutrients that the photosynthesis provides them. So they are confused because everything's weird and they don't know what's happening and it's warm. They are hungry because they let their friends out and they're hot because it's hot. And without the um, zoovensily, the coral can recover. It's possible for it to recover and reuptake the things. If the coral is still white, it's not dead yet. It's just dying. And if the temperatures drop quickly enough, things can recover and it can work out. But if you get to a reef and it's the coral is brown and covered in algae and kind of slimy, it's usually too late because then the, the coral doesn't have enough energy to defend itself anymore. And it's dying definitely for sure. If you touch the coral and it kind of breaks apart, it has repetition necrosis and it just becomes this crumbly mess. It's dead. There's no dying anymore. It's gone, dead, cannot be saved. So now that the corals are gone, everything that needed the coral for shelter is reduced to the skeleton, which can't house as many organisms because the coral has, it's like a forest. And in winter, it's much harder to hide in a forest because there's no leaves. Still not a plant, no matter how many plant analogies I use for corals, corals or animals. They are a colony of animals. Yeah, okay. So if you don't have time to look at the entirety of chasing coral, which is, you should, um, there's a three or so minute video that I'll leave in the show notes that shows some of the um, time-lapse footage of corals dying and how all the organisms that were there before or no gone, you just see a few and you need to keep in mind that the few you see are all there is because there is not as much room to hide anymore and you see almost everyone who lives on the reef. So it's even worse than the images make it look because things are just more obvious. Yeah, um, you should definitely look at that. And as I said, they don't just get affected by the warming ocean. Things, organisms, everything grows differently. Coral get affected by the acidity. They get affected by the temperature. They get affected by us bottom trawling them all over them. But all the other organisms that we didn't discuss also directly get affected by the rising sea level, not the rising sea level, the rising water temperatures. Too many things rising. Um, because if it's warm, things just change. Just think about you during the last heat wave. You probably were frustrated and hot and angry and had a little bit of a shorter fuse than usual. I just assume that other animals have a comfort temperature too. Because if you've ever seen fish at the wrong temperature or the wrong pH or anything, 
they don't look happy. They don't look content. And I think that we need to do something about all of this and save for corals. And because I can't tell you how to save the coral reefs other than everything I usually already tell you, I'm just gonna tell you to educate yourself. If you've got the time, go watch those documentaries and then tell everyone else about them. I, you don't have to be me or Hermione or anything, but I think that the biggest thing we're fighting here is ignorance. Money might make the world go round, but I think it's knowledge that actually makes it work. Knowledge is the resource, the resource. And without it, things don't work. So ignorance is what we need to fight. Ignorance is the enemy. Knowledge is the solution. So let's put the knowledge where it belongs. And that's what everyone Let's spread as much knowledge as possible to fight humanity's ignorance so we can save this planet together and not against the people who prefer money. God, today was weird. I'll stop babbling now because I've definitely babbled enough for today. If you still enjoyed this for some reason, go to katehildenbrand.com slash support where you can find ways to support me with or without money. There have been a lot of comments and I am barely keeping up with answering them, which is awesome. And yeah, but I will get back to those of you who actually ask questions. And I'll answer the emails of those who emailed me, which are a few people by now. And they all start their emails with, you probably get a lot of emails, but no, there's like three or four of you. Still awesome. And I appreciate every single one of you. But if you have something you want to email me about, don't feel bad. I'll tell you if I'm overwhelmed and it's too much to answer. I'm babbling again. I wanted to stop babbling. So I'll let you go and I'll see you next time. Bye, friend. <laughs>